This stream is cleared for takeoff. Hello, everyone. Looks like we're live. We're on. Uh, hi, everyone. Welcome back to the fifth edition of our developer Q&A series. My name is Jane. I'm one of the community managers for Microsoft Flight Simulator. And you can see there are three very familiar faces on the screen if you've seen any of our other Q&A. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and let them introduce themselves, starting on the left with Jorg. Hi, everybody. Uh, excited to be here again. I'm Jorg. Uh, I'm the head of Flight Sim here at Microsoft. And I'm super excited. We have 90 minutes today. <laughs> I am too. I think we'll get a lot more questions answered. Uh, in the middle, we have Seb. Hello. So I'm Seb uh, from Osobo, uh, head of Osobo. And uh, uh, on Flight Sim, I'm doing a lot of aerodynamics also, as you may have seen in the video. Yes. And that was an awesome video. Um, and we'll talk about that soon. But last but not least, we have on the right, Martial. Hello, everybody. I'm Martial from Asavo2. I'm the executive producer of Flight Team. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. And a hello to chat. I see you all there. We have um, a lot of familiar faces that I'm seeing right now, over 500 people here so far. So welcome. Glad you guys can tune in again to this very special Q&A. Obviously, we didn't have one in December, so we could give our devs here a break. But we're back and ready to answer a ton of your questions. We have pulled a bunch of questions from the forums where you guys submitted some, but we also want to take a lot of live questions today as well. So we will all be looking at chat. Um, and whenever, whenever we see an appropriate question, we'll all ask it to them, throw it over, and uh, we'll, we'll go with that. So I think it'd be really cool to first talk about that feature discovery video that you're in, Seb, about aerodynamics. Yep. <laughs> so there were a lot of comments in YouTube and also some of the questions we got from the forums regarding uh, the video. And I don't know if you just want to go through a couple of the comments. I, I recorded a few of them um, that were really interesting to me anyway, uh, based off of that video. Um, one of them, which I thought was interesting, is uh, Javier asked that you said something about updrafts because heats uh, because of heats and lakes does that mean the sim will make simulations of thermals you hope so so that the yeah yeah so this system is already is already in there so um, in the in the aerodynamics video you see um, at some point we show uh, these little blue particles which uh, blow through the world uh, so what this is is in the simulator we just uh, like throw like uh, particles in the world and they go through exactly the same simulation than the airplane uh, surfaces do, and then they just uh, get blown, uh, blown away. And uh, um, as you can see, when it goes up a mountain, the particles go up. And so this obviously, uh, this effect decreases with altitude. And on the other side of the mountain, there is, it's more random, right? It, it tends to go back down, but there's more turbulences. Um, there is updrafts um, in, uh, also, so not necessarily, so on flat terrain, you also have updrafts. Um, these are more intense under, as you know, like uh, cumulus clouds, like uh, the clouds which go up. So if you fly under these, you get more. But it's uh, important to um, know that these are very dependent on temperature. If the if the ground um, is cold, uh, you don't get many updrafts. So, um, mm -hmm. for example, for the video, in order to get more, um, I I flew at 35 degrees and the sun and on land. And so if you go over water, because the water is colder, you get less of these, you get less turbulence and you get less updraft. And so to really get a, a maximum, so like right now, most people in the Northern Hemisphere are not gonna get, they're gonna get less turbulence and they're gonna get less of these temperature, like thermals or them, thermical updrafts. Um, but you can just force the weather setting and go to like make your own summer, right? 30 degrees, they tend to build up at over 20 and 30 is really a lot. Mm -hmm. But if you fly at minus 10, you don't get much of these. Um, and over water, you also there, I would say about 10 times. So there's one video where you, you, you see the TBM flying and over land, it's sort of shaky. And then over sea, it becomes calm. Um, and so yeah, over water, there is, there is still some, but a lot less. 
Um, and so this is already in the sim. It's uh, simulated completely on, on, like it depends on forests, all sorts of factors. But we keep improving, of course, uh, mm -hmm. over time, um, debugging if there's some something which doesn't work, but also improving. Um, um, currently, it's really mostly based on, on on some of the information we have, but we can, for example, we um, we're not yet simulating of like is the is the surface dark? For example, like a a, a darker uh, building rooftop is going to create more thermals than a, 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 a brighter because it's it's less catching temperature. So stuff like this could be still uh, improved. Um, and uh, and well, other 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 things, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe um, I mean, but the weather we have is already in 3D. It has already little cubes, and that also simulates like wind in all directions. But this is on top, right? We start with the base of the 3D weather, and then we just uh, do this little like particle simulation, um, which the plane then gets caught in. Okay. Yep. So actually, this is the number two most asked question from the community this month. And it's all about flight model updates. And there's this list of maybe seven or eight bullet points. I'm hoping to just quickly go through each of these. Maybe they're addressed in the video, or maybe you will have something you wanted to add to it. Um, so the big question was, when can we expect flight model updates? And the first point is wheel friction on crosswind, airplane uh, weather vanes, Require too, way too much rudder. Sorry, require way too much rudder when on the ground. Yeah. So, uh, so mm -hmm. first of all, I, I would like to say. Uh, so, I'm really happy um, that I mean, basically, as when we released this video, I all of a sudden did get a lot more uh, questions and feedback. So, mm -hmm. uh, obviously, this never this never stops, right? We're continuously improving. Um, every update that has been released uh, since launch had some improvements on the simulation. Um, a lot of this is linked to uh, third party um, who have constantly uh, problems or require improvements or changes or, or more tools. Uh, but also um, um, just when we see a bug, we always investigate and sometimes it's it's a quick fix. Um, so this is a continuous thing. And uh, on, in the video, I just already went over some of, of the improvements that have been done mm -hmm. uh, since launch. But something like we, so wheel friction, um, it's important to know that compared to uh, FS6, we already did a pass, so we added. Um, so basically, in FS6, it was just a. So the the, the ground was always flat, so you could not um, skid downhill or something. And what what happened is basically the wind was just totally shut off, um, because well, it didn't it didn't have static friction. So when you don't have static friction and any force pushes on the plane, it just slides away. And uh, and uh, the problem is like the first thing is when we introduce slopes. Well, gravity is always there, so the plane just always slid away. So we had to implement static friction just for that, so that you so for that so that you can park on a slope. And uh, and we also implemented it on wind, um, but the system is yet not perfect, and uh, it we have to disable horizontal wind when you are like at below um, I don't know one knot or something, just at extremely low speeds, because otherwise it would just slightly turn, on and we don't but we want to have perfect taxiway so. We improved the wind um, and this system so that now the wind is full uh, 100% as soon as you start taxiing. But when you're stopped, it isn't yet. But from the front, mm -hmm. it is, right? Okay. That's why some people say if you have front wind, you can you can just fly away. But from the side, it won't. So this is something we plan on improvement, improving. Uh, it, requ it requires some more um, profound uh, rework of the whole collision system. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's something which is a bit longer. Okay. Um, but it's do it's perfectly doable, right? It's not something um, crazy impossible. It just requires to go down into 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 more systems and and we work that. But otherwise, everything is simulated. It's just that so on, also you need to be in in the maximum realism, right? Uh, one of the uh, features of uh, when you turn down realism is that it just cuts crosswind on the runway. So you need to have that on. But still, when your speed is zero and below like one knot, it just uh, it just fades away. Gotcha. Um, gotcha. But this is on the yeah. It's something we already improved a lot, and it's something we want to improve further. Um, but once you uh, just one thing, once you once you fly or you are at maybe 100 knots and about to rotate, this is much more correct. Um, but it's uh, uh, the, the wind is 100 is 100 percent there. Um, but there again, there is something we can still improve on how the um, the wheel resists like slide right. The static mm -hmm. friction is caused. Um, and yeah. how, and how about um, 
Oh, I'm hearing myself. <laughs> How about turbulence behavior and upward downward drafts and currents? So this I, I talked about just before, right? right? So it's something we have already. So since launch, we added the fact that on water, there's the differentiation between water and land. Uh, we added the fact that temperature is also taken into account. Yeah. Like the actual weather uh, can temperature. Um, and uh, so before launch, there was already like mountains, hills and and buildings and forests. And so we keep improving that. Um, also, there is, um, um, as this is something that was really new, um, there is just a limit to the effect. So in the video I, I, I showed, it, it can build up to 1,000 feet per second. If you look at some extreme weather on the internet, you can see that updrafts, they can reach 10,000 feet per second, uh, per, per minute, sorry. Um, so we, we have limited it, um, but this is, I mean, when we get better and better, I think we will unlock this further and further. But currently, like if you start with a light plane, like a X curve, and you get a 10,000 feet per minute updraft, you you would just not understand what is like it would like a, look like a leaf. So mm -hmm. I would think I would say this is something which we keep improving. But also, um, I think we need to add more systems where people will understand what why they're just getting shaken around. Um, in that case, okay. one one thing we are doing the alpha is that this was much stronger. I think updrafts were limited to four or five thousand. And some people didn't understand why on final they were just going upwards and it's because they were on a hill and and the wind was going up. Um, you should be more concise, Seb. We won't have time to talk Sorry. about you. Sorry. <laughs> I thought we had... You're, 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 you're so passionate. He's like, but well, we have 90 <laughs> minutes now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, a couple more points on flight model updates. Um, adverse yaw effect is a, is a big topic. Yeah, so this is already in the sim. But it's it's per plane dependent and and so in the video we can see it on the Cessna I I show it um, I have had other reports from pilots that it was just too weak it's not it's not absent but it's too it was too weak um, I will go over two points at the same time right and in Russia six um, so um, our community team showed me a very nice thread about someone who um, who uh, had a new way of measuring um, basically on a timeline. Uh, like there was an input on a rudder and then there was the plane just uh, sliding. Mm -hmm. um, so I really like that that way of visualizing. So we added a tool that shows the same in the sim. And we have now a program where our pilots are going to record this on actual planes. Uh, so we're going to collect the data on planes so that we have actual, because it's not very very easy to find that on, on the internet or, or and it's not something that, uh, like it's not on a POH or something, but we're going to collect the data on real planes we have the tool now in the sim, and so we're going to be able to look side by side. Mm. And but it's it's on a plane by plane basis, right? Some planes are heavier, some are lighter, and we're going to do this. So the first one is the 172, for of course, um, that we're going to collect data, and we're going to move plane by plane. And adverse yaw and inertia, it's sort of the same, right? When you push the rudder, what happens? That's great. Okay. And, uh, yeah. and how about turboprop drag? So the turboprop, as I explained in the video, this is the big topic um, that we're starting. So we're full in, inside of it, right? We have a, I mean, that while I was doing the, the video, we were already full in it. Um, and so we are, we are improving the whole turbine and turboprop uh, systems. And so this is, this is in the works and expect in one of the upcoming updates whenever it's finished. Um, we're not just um, improving the systems, but also the debug tools. An authoring tool so that it's easier for uh, for third party to make these and visualization and just so that we can basically confirm that our simulation is is exact to the data um, but yeah this is we're right in it okay um two more here p factor and slipstream yeah so these are also shown in the video so this is all implemented um and it's just a per plane tuning and and setting um on a general, um, um, they are they have been tuned on the weaker side right now because for a lot of people, um, these are effects that they. I mean, when when you fly, it's like the first thing you're like, okay, why is it not going like a car straight? Why why do I have to do rudder on on climb? Um, and uh, and uh, so they are present, and it's just a plane by plane tuning, and uh, so these have already been tuned once uh, since uh, release on many planes. And we're going to do further updates, but all the effects, P factor, slipstream, you have seen it in the in the video, right? The engine effect on the slipstream, um, on the on the surfaces. This is all already implemented, and just a matter of uh, iteration over planes and, and feedback. Mm -hmm. um, the last thing, 
big thing to cover would be wake turbulence. So wake turbulence, this is not yet in the sim, mm -hmm. and this is one of our upcoming. It's in the in the. Um, it's on our backlog. Um, it's not far away. I think it's going to be just after turbo prop. Um, so in the in the next months. Okay, very cool. Um, and uh, another interesting comment I saw on YouTube. Now I don't know if you'll have an answer for this, but I thought it was a cool suggestion. Um, Wingview Productions said you should add the customization screen under each aircraft an option to assign control panels for yoke throttle pedals so you don't have to change it in the options before each flight to match the aircraft you're going to fly. Um, I thought that was very interesting. Wondering if, if you've seen that recommendation before or if you're interested in doing that in the future. Um, I would say yes, interesting. If yeah. you look at it in the <laughs> but yeah, assigning basically a profile for each plane or something like that. Mm -hmm. it's something we were talking it's, about. Yeah. It's kind of it's come up before a few times. It's very cool. On the backlog. <laughs> <laughs> and, and number seven, I see on the list is also ground effect. This is our yes. This has already been improved earlier this year um, as a request of one of the third party, and it's also going to come in in the next or either the next update or the, the one after. There has been a few tweaks on ground effect, uh, and I mean it's probably still can be improved, but it's it's already been improved since release, and there's another improvement coming. Yeah, that's great. Thank you so much, Seb. <laughs> I'll give you a break now as we'll move <laughs> on to talk about our upcoming update, um, the UK World Update coming soon, and Jorg, I'll pass it on to you to talk about this. It's coming. No, no, more <laughs> so it's it looks it. I mean, I wrote that little blurb last week. I think like it looks really cool. Uh, the data we got from from Bing is awesome. Like I think it's up to fifty centimeter dam, twenty centimeter aerials. So all that is great. We have five cities. I'm I'm not sure we've really ever talked about all the cities. So it's London, Birmingham, Oxford, Cambridge, and Bristol. Um, they are coming. Uh, actually, just right before the stream, we had uh, an update. It just went from the Bing team, they got it working, to a Sobo. There's some more work to be done, so it's going to be a few more days, but at least the the fundamentals are in place now. And we can, like, I fundamentally, we looked at it and we said, can we really or should we really launch the UK and Ireland, by the way, uh, without London? And we decided it's it would be kind of unforgivable. So we're, we're going to wait. It, it might be next week, but we don't know exactly the date yet. So we'll just, just sit tight, but people are like, crunching on this, honestly, to get it get it up and running. Um, I think we showed a few screenshots on Thursday last week, but um, just to just to hold you over just a little bit more, we I think we prepared just um, a little bit of the trailer, not all of it, it's not all done, but uh, Jane, I don't know if you're ready, but if you could run that just as a tease. Sure am. <laughs> all right, I am playing for you guys a little teaser of the upcoming UK update. Here we go. All right, that's all you get. <laughs> Just when the music was getting good too, Jorg. I was like, I'm loving that music. It is yeah. super good. Yeah, we're, I mean, I I think it's gonna. I think I hope you're gonna love it. Uh, so we we obviously think it's cool. Um, last time we chatted, it was not clear that we actually get all the data. We got extra data for Ireland, which is nice. Um, so I think overall. It's coming. It's it's days away, not weeks. So uh, stand by. Be a little bit patient. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Looking at chat, looks like uh, they like it. That's good. I'm really Yay. excited about it. 
Um, thank you. And Yori, I think maybe you have some other things to tease about possible next world updates as well. The next world update, da 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 da. So it's funny. The very <laughs> first comment on this, on this, uh, on the chat. You got, you got it right. Um, so um, the next update is France, and in Europe we would say Benelux. So it's France, Belgium, Netherlands, and Luxembourg, and it's planned for the end of March. I think it's gonna be great. So yeah, we're already hard at work on it. I know several people who are really excited about that, especially at Belgium. Um, so does that mean, uh, ah, since we have people so <laughs> yeah, oh. in Bordeaux, right? So I bet we'll get some really cool points of interest in that area. I'm really excited to see what you guys come up with. <laughs> yeah, they're looking forward to it. Cool. That was a, a really nice teaser. Thank you so much. Um, so we'll move on from the world update to our upcoming Sim Update 3, which I believe is slated right now towards the end of February. So Marcial, you're up. <laughs> Can you give us an update on what you're planning for that one? Oh, uh, yes, of course. Um, so we've been working a lot of the, the Garmin system uh, for uh, the G1000 and G3000. So we've got a bunch of new options there, uh, including a lot of navigation options. And a, a very small one, but I like because it has been asked uh, by the community, which is the setup of the luminosity. So you, you can at least uh, dim the, the systems now. Uh, we also did some updates on the weather system. Um, it's, this is happening on the weather panel, so you can have a better understanding on uh, uh, what's going on uh, about wings and the, the gusts. Um, and we also did uh, some option for, for tweaking. So Seb could talk about that for, for hours, I guess. <laughs> uh, we, we did some stuff to, uh, to tweak the, the center of gravity and the engines because um, every time you're, you're flying with a, with a plane, uh, we always uh, talk about the, uh, um, the, the plane we're, we're flying with with the club. It's never the same setting. When we, even if it's the same model, you never get the same behavior because the CG uh, moves a bit, the, the engine uh, gets some... Um, Okay, can be used sometimes, so you never get the same performances. So we will allow user to tweak a bit those performances, the center of gravity, the, the performances of, of the plane. And also the uh, the other tweaking system we will include is uh, to get a tweak control on the on the surface authority. So you will be able to to set up the the behavior of your plane and and you can have it match a, a little bit more closer to uh, to the, the plane you are used to, to fly with. Um, and also, finally, uh, we are expecting some improvement with the visual effects. Um, and we are doing our best to, uh, to bring the cone trails and some first version of the, the landing effects. Uh, the, the team is working very hard on that. There are still some, some issues. Uh, they're so dedicated that they want that to be perfect. So. Let's hope that we will be in a position to, to bring this in the next sim update, the, the third sim update. If not, I can guarantee you that it will be in the fourth. Yeah, and that was one of the top questions um, from the forums was, uh, when guess. is Contrails coming? So that's really great to know. Um, mm. and, and chat, if you have any questions about anything Marcial is talking about regarding the sim update three, feel free to ask. I'm reading it now. Um, I'm seeing a lot of questions that are going to be answered later, which is why <laughs> we're not answering them yet. But thank you. Anyway, um, mm. Sim Update 3 will ha it have visibility option. Visibility option. Can you expound on that, Biological? Uh, Express says, and what did you mean like water effects on landing? Is that what you're referring to when you're talking about contrails and landing effects? So, yeah, so on landing effects, we've got the, mm. the first version of it, which is like a smoke and uh, some effects when you're the ground, the, the, the wheel touch, touches the ground. Uh, we will later on bring some effects depending on the kind of surfaces you're going to okay. to touch. Uh, it can be grass, uh, dust, and, and later on we will try to, uh, to bring water, snow, uh, all the other uh, materials you could land on. Awesome. Uh, 
uh, is a development rework, hold on, is a development kit rework part of update three or does that still limit the add-on developer as strongly as it does now? So well, I guess, a, yeah, update to the SDK maybe? Yes, so the, the SDK has got its roadmap and uh, its roadmap and it's going to be to, to bring some, some other SDK updates there. Uh, like I wouldn't say it's the usual business, but we are working very hard with third parties so we can improve the SDK, so we can bring more and more add-ons like new planes. Uh, maybe you can talk about that. And it's a close relationship we've got with third parties so we can improve mm -hmm. our tools and bring uh, updates every time we update the title. Okay. Um, got some clarification on the visibility question. They meant uh, ad adjusting visibility for IFR or VFR conditions. Currently, visibility can only be adjusted using aerosol density. Okay. Uh, no, I don't have any uh, answer to uh, to give. To, to, uh, to give. So um, mm -hmm. we're studying the, the question. I promise. So I also seen some icing question in the stream chat. Yes. So um, yes, we can talk about that. So uh, uh, it won't be brought with the the next team update, but we will try to uh, to improve that in the in the next one. So it looks like people are um, complaining about this um, icing system. I mean, the visual being a bit too strong. So uh, I want them to to be reassured. We're going to uh, to try. No, no, we're not going to try. We're going to bring a system on which you will be able to trick the icing. Mm -hmm. uh, just a word about that. It's not like uh, it's not like an on on off conditions. Uh, uh, we did a formula uh, that we're keeping by the the weather specialist uh, to to exactly uh, guess what are the icing conditions from no no icing to severe conditions. So we've got a table, this has, has been done, but maybe the translation of this table to the visual effect is a bit too strong. So we are going to do some tweak there. And also to, well, you know, uh, you can disable the uh, physic relationship of the icing on the plane. I do think that we will also enable the uh, the fact that you can remove all the icing, including okay. the visual icing of it. So it'd be a, a toggle on off button for icing in general for people who don't want to have to deal with it. Yes, I'm sorry, it's not a game, it's a sim. You're right, <laughs> You know, sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Sorry. <laughs> Keeping us honest. All right, let's see, going through the chat. Uh, any more questions regarding this particular update? If not, we're going to move on to giving you some updates on the feedback snapshot, particularly the wishlist item section. That's what we got okay. next. Jane, you might want to say that we're gonna we have a dedicated Q and A session later, so we're gonna yes, go. Yes, yes. So th th these things you're writing, they're not wasted. We're gonna go later. Correct. <laughs> no, just... Yep. A lot of them. We have a Q and A section at the end. So I'm gonna go ahead and move on to that. So switching screens here, we have last week's feedback snapshot, our top wishes section, and of course, number one, the fly by wire community mod. Um, we have an update from Yorg. It's going really good. Uh, so I talked to the team, um, or the leader of the team at least, uh, quite a bit. They are now in direct communication also with the Sobo. There are, there were honestly mostly some um, sort of legally type of things, you know, because their, their stuff is open source. So we needed to make sure that everything is good. Uh, so far, it's going good. We are prototyping a, uh, a free section in the store. Um, it's gonna be. It's gonna take a little bit because it's a bunch of UX work. But the hope is, the moment we have all the paperwork in place, the will is there from both sides to have the plane in the marketplace. Um, and I mean, we see how much everybody loves it, and we think it's great too. So you should think that this is coming. It's not like nothing's ever signed until it's signed. But then everybody wants it to happen. So the the fly by wire guys have been great. Uh, I would even extend that. We were talking to uh, the working title people just as well and Salty, um, so the CJ4 and the 747. And the intent is the same, that these these, these um, community enhanced planes are going to be in our marketplace at some point, hopefully in, this, in the near future. And so at that point, we can cross off the number one request, right. but we're on, we took this very seriously. Right. <laughs> Thank you, Jorg. Um, the community is really excited for um, that possible integration. 
And I think probably the most question, most asked question in chat today is about the replay functionality. So I don't know if anyone wants to address um, an update on how that's going. I mean, I can say one thing. So um, sure. um, we have had a team working on that for quite a while. So the number pr one priority we had was our internal needs because we are making a lot of videos. And our video team was also having requests and, and uh, some stutters at some point. Uh, so that was now just solved uh, a few a few weeks ago and uh, helped a lot make the, the videos for the UK update. Um, and so that being behind us, we can now focus on, on adding a replay feature. Our, our inter initial goal is to have something simple. Um, I think what's trying to focus on what people need most um, and it's going to be record and uh, play. And so, yeah, we're not going to make a full system with timelines and, and etc. But our priority is to get something stutter free, just like the, the video team has. Um, and so um, currently we're working on it and uh, we don't have a release date yet. But it's on one of our uh, one of our uh, one of our upcoming tasks. Awesome, thank you, Seb. And our next question is on multiple screens. Is there an update on that? Um, so for the moment, the uh, the the engineer that are working on the engine and and the rendering are focusing on on something else. But it's on one of the top of the uh, backlog. Uh, uh, that we want you to, to tackle when we will have the time to, to do that. So we are thinking about that. It's it's there. Right. Uh, for the moment, we've got some some work to do. We will talk about DirectX, for instance, DirectX 12 or some some other options. But yes, um, it's in the pipe. Perfect. Thank you. And back to you, Jorg. Do you have an update on our uh, scenery gateway system? I do, and that worked great. So we talked about it last time. I think we gave like some uh, mailing address to send this to, um, and folks did. Uh, all the people that have deep insight into how the system works, mostly for Xplain. Uh, so they they got in touch with us. We looked at it, and we just had a meeting this morning. Um, I could say it, Monsieur. Uh, a, a, one of the programmers at the Sobo is currently doing a prototype, but but fundamentally, we heard you that you want to go do that and that you want to help with making the airports better. It's just a question of time, but we've started. Yeah, big up to Eric. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> big. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Seb, <laughs> do you have any updates yep. on um, DirectX 12? Yeah, so um, DirectX 12 is directly linked to um, our current work on the on uh, the Xbox version. Um, so this is is one of our big focuses right now, um, and uh, I would say the the important part part of that work is really optimization. Um, so what we're currently our goal, what we what we're doing is to um, not degrade anything. It is just to rework all the systems we have to be op more optimal um, in terms of performance. And, uh, and mostly memory also. Um, and so the good news is that this will all feed back into the um, PC version because it's it's basically for us, it's, it's just one common uh, source code base. So um, there has been a lot of progress made uh, over the last six months on memory and performance. Some of it has been released, just a small part, but there's a lot more to come. Um, and so this is very good news for PC. Um, I would say on one side, it means that lower end PCs are going to have a much better experience. Um, and the other side, it also frees up a lot more because um, basically what we want is, is improve the, the PC experience further. We, we, we want to add stuff, add effects, uh, add more detail and uh, optimization of all the systems allows us to then uh, later improve the details a lot. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, we have already um, I think we're close to a factor of 2x in terms of optimization on, on memory. Um, and this necessarily, um, it sort of spills over into performance because a lot of the performance is memory, bandwidth and cache size and, and right, the CPU is, is usually very performant, but it's always it's always sort of limited by um, by memory access. And so this has a, it ha it, 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 even if we didn't focus a lot on performance lately, it had an, an indirect impact on performance especially on machines where there's a lot of uh, um, memory related stutters, right? When when sometimes when it freezes, usually it's just uh, 
the memory which is trying to move stuff around, right, to get uh, to get access. Mm -hmm. And also, um, um, we also got a lot of improvements on GPU memory, um, which means that uh, uh, this is also going to feedback on PC, and uh, and I think it's gonna basically improve the GPU performance because, well, smaller memory GPUs are gonna have a, a, a better time. Um, and this all, of, of course, um, is on DirectX 12. Um, so, um, yeah, DirectX 12 is going to bring performance and memory improvements, but mostly because we re-optimized all the systems. DirectX 12 by itself doesn't really change a lot of things, right? We already were multi-threaded in terms of rendering. Um, and uh, But yeah, the whole exercise of, uh, of doing this Xbox version really allows us to rework all the systems, and that brings a lot of optimizations for the PC. Right. Um, and there's the... So also DirectX will enable um, improvements of effects. Um, so we're not currently working on new things, but um, at some point we are, because of DirectX 12, able to implement ray tracing and things like that. All it means is that you're going to see less grain in the reflections or things like that. Um, so to define exactly when this is going to be finished, but this is the kind of things that enables. Not for clouds, really, because um, uh, the kind of ray tracing Enable doesn't really regard clouds, but mostly like reflections, like um, on water. Or so there was sometimes these little grains. Uh, this is the kind of things that it fixes, and then also it enables better lighting. Right, you can do a lot better uh, lighting and shadows, less grain on shadows, things like that will be enabled. But currently, the our focus is to bring the um, exact same experience uh, than on PC uh, to the Xbox, mm. and this uh, this brings a lot of optimizations. I'm getting 100 million DLSS question mark question mark question mark question <laughs> mark. Mm, yep, I don't know. <laughs> I haven't looked at it yet, so um, maybe. <laughs> but ray tracing confirmed. Um, they did talk about that in the last Q and A a bit, right? I had some people asking if ray tracing was going to be in it. Yeah. So uh, yeah, working on it, but I don't know exactly yet when. Mm -hmm. When our, our real, I mean, the first priority is porting the same experience. Yeah. And then improving on it. So ray tracing is really a new effect. So um, and you have to also make it backward compatible because not everyone has it. Um, so right now our priority is uh, is uh, just making the same core experience and improving the PC performance. Um, but it will enable ray tracing, of course. And at some point, yeah, everybody's going to be on DirectX 12 instead of 11. Um, yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Seb. And your, uh, would you like to comment a bit on mountain terrain? I do. I, I actually wanted to talk, like, I, maybe I said that before, but I wanted to say something about weather. Because this is it's all the way up there. We kind of said, sure. hey, we're not planning on it. And I would just want to explain. Look, people okay. can go... I mean, I actually downloaded it, right? So there's there's a there's a solid tool from a third party or two actually, that that allows you to change some stuff in the weather. I consider weather, or we consider weather, as a core functionality of the sim. It's going to be super important. For I mean, I saw the <laughs> saw the chat gliders, all kinds of other things. It's going to be super important. Um, so we can't shard the functionality. We need to get it right in the base sim. So that's the commitment. We're going to get it right in the base sim. Doesn't mean you can't use third-party tools. You can always use third-party tools, but we we don't we don't think it's the right solution. The right solution is to be top-notch in the base sim. So we're gonna we're paying a lot of attention to what people want, and that's coming. So just wanted to say that. Okay. Uh, okay. On the mountain terrain, I think there's some really cool stuff. So you'll see that with the upcoming updates. Um, I always gush over the data that exists in the world. Uh, for example, the France update, we have um, we have really high resolution dem. That really high resolution dem will help us with the mountains a lot. And then the Bing guys are also doing some uh, new techniques that they are pretty confident will increase the appearance of the mountains. So in general, we know that this is a thing. You know, we are totally aware. We fly over those mountains too, and we want them to look awesome. Um, we think data will help, but there's some techniques that are coming. So in, in overall, I think it's going to look really good. I think we always talk about the, you know, of, of Central Europe, right? So Pyrenees and stuff like that, or like the Dolomites in Italy in particular, they don't look like the Dolomites right now. And we know that, uh, and we go skiing there and stuff. So we want it to look awesome and, and we will not stop until they look awesome. So just be assured. 
love your enthusiasm. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think everyone else appreciates that too. So thank you for that update on mountains. And next we have freeware. Jorg, I think you want to comment on this again. Yeah, so it's it's actually somewhat related to um, the things we talked about with fly by wire and some of the um, like the salties and the, the there's ten of them actually. I don't know if you play all those, but there's 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 ten groups that that basically enhance the base games, which is <laughs> great. Um, we also know that people make freeware. Um, we it's all of staging, right? I, I, we heard number one thing: fly by wire, please. Okay, gotcha. So we're gonna do that. Freeware is now in the plans. Um, we don't really have a timeline for it yet, but uh, I think it would be great. I like some of these liveries too, <laughs> uh, and other things. So uh, we'll do it. It's just a question of when exactly. You can't quite commit yet. Mm -hmm. That's great news. And I think um, one cool topic we can get into now, Jorg, is regarding uh, VR. And we have something new to share. Are you okay with oh, me yeah, sharing yeah. that now? Yeah, that'd Alrighty. be cool. I think just, I and mean, I think Marcial, maybe you're going to talk to it in Pacific. But what I fundamentally we wanted to say was we obviously launched VR in December. We had a, a beta before that, so we got some input. And, you know, we see how many people play VR. Uh, there's quite a few, and those are, that are playing are super dedicated, but it doesn't rise. Like when in our feedback snapshot, it doesn't rise to the top. Right. So we decided to make a separate VR snapshot just to show you we've heard you. Uh, this is acknowledged, and but we are now just now. I mean, it's just started. We're just now in the beginning of planning. So, Marcial, do you want to talk about this? Um, uh, well, yes. Um, so for the moment, it's, it's very. You will see it's very, it's very vague, right? It's we did not have the time to uh, to put everything on the schedule. But uh, as Jörg said, uh, VR is now part of the the core experience. Uh, I personally. At home, only use flight team with a VR headset. So I'm convinced nice. of what's needed to. Oh yeah, it's 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 hard oh, yeah. to go back to a flat screen. Yeah, That's so cool. I, I won't I won't show mine. Right now. Um, <laughs> so yeah, so uh, the VR controls on an RN pipe, um, everything's to help uh, user to have a better interaction um, with the cockpit. Uh, this we also be bring with the uh, we are talking about the the Xbox um, port. Uh, so with the Xbox port, we had the chance to uh, to rethink the way we're going to interact with the cockpit. So the, these are some some side effects, and the good side effects will be also easier using some some VR devices to uh, to interact with the with the controls. And do you want to talk about any of the specific um, improvements that we're seeing on this new VR feedback snapshot that you're excited okay, so, about? Uh, uh, performance is a graphics. Uh, Seb already talked about that. So every yes. improvement we're getting on the on the title, uh, the VR will benefit from that. Controls have talked about that. Uh, it's on the pipe. Uh, the the brightness slider. Uh, it's under investigation because that was a bit of a surprise for us. But uh, we're going to work on that too. Um, uh, which was in important also, it was the uh, the scaling and slider setting. So it not has been started yet, but uh, the designer are on working on that to to have a better scope. Um, oh, uh, the additional headset like uh, Primax, um, we are using OpenXR. So this has been a choice to. Uh, to have a, a wide range of devices been, been working from day one. But as a consequence, is a headset that does not support VR on all the functionalities of, of, of VR, of, of OpenXR right now, uh, it's, a, it's a problem for us. So uh, we, could, we could say that we are in contact with just about all uh, manufacturers of VR. So mm -hmm. this is really just working through it. Everybody wants it to happen. It's just a question of are they going to come over to OpenXR, uh, uh, OpenVR or whatnot. So it's, but it's in progress. Yeah, right. I, I, in general, like look, there's a lot of TBDs here and things like that. Mm. Just so the whole point is, this is obviously talking to you community. We're, we're having our listening ears on. Please vote, give us feedback. VR is a continued part of the platform. We're going to keep working on making it better. That's all we can really say. We obviously play. I play all the time when I play. I play VR nowadays. Wait, what um, headset do you have? 
uh, you know, a G2, like a G2, <laughs> maybe, uh, you know, but I mean, you know, whatever. Uh, but but fundamentally, just please let us know what you need and what you think, and we'll we'll pay attention. Please do chat, <laughs> um, and I, I have been seeing them pop up in the forums, and you know, obviously, we got some of that from the forums and into this new feedback snapshot. Um, how often do you think we'll be updating this particular snapshot, Jorg? Uh, it really actually depends on you. I mean, I think there's this perception, and I actually think it's true that the feedback snapshot is a little, you know, it's coarse. So you don't see a ton of changes all the time. It's not like it, it's flying by because I mean, the team is working incredibly hard and there's hundreds of changes in every update we put out. Uh, but you might not see it that way. It might not come across this way. So we're trying to, this adds granularity. Um, some of the bigger items obviously take some, some of that stuff takes like a year. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's going to take a while. I would say, I mean, we update the snapshot pretty much every week. I think you see that, but it doesn't mean that stuff is changing all the time. But we're looking at it. We have a meeting every Monday with you, Shay and Jane, and, <laughs> and, others, <laughs> and then we update this on thursdays and it's just a cycle like so we are mm -hmm. constantly looking at the forums and the feedback so it, it really comes down to how 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 difficult are some of these things and how long do they take uh, but just know it's given that we are organizing a lot of our workflow to the feedback snapshot like when it's on there we actually tend to tend to work on it right away um so it's important to keep that active and we are looking at it weekly and we're updating it weekly even though it might not exactly seem that way right and speaking of feedback snapshots, um, I believe there's even a new one you want to introduce, Jorg. Yeah, so there's something. So accessibility is an important topic for us. Um, we have a dedicated strike team on that topic. Internally, we call this gaming for everyone. Um, and since launch, we've actually stated that it's it's one of our goals to ensure that the, the simulator is very accessible. The, the wording we used was... Uh, no pilot left behind. And that essentially means that anybody who wants to fly can, regardless of who you are, where you are, or what your abilities are, uh, or what your disabilities are. So um, we did a bunch of stuff. If you if you look at launch, like we did all the standard things like color changes and font size changes, but the game has assists. Uh, you can take the, the, the code pilot can take over. Um, things that people really like was the quick menu toolbars, the visual guides for landing procedures, all those things. But um, but we think we need to pay more attention. Um, so we're going to add another feedback snapshot that is 100% dedicated to this. Uh, we're going to we have a mailing list established, just like uh, for some other things we had, like last last time for the uh, for the community gateway. And I think Jane, you should communicate that on the website instead of me just saying here here's the here's the email address. Um, sure. But but please, I mean, it's so I get some very long very insightful mails from people that have very specific disabilities that they and they say i you say you want all of us to be able to play and we can't and um that goes straight to the heart um we, we want everybody to be able to and we want to take this seriously right now our feedback snapshot doesn't give us enough granularity so please invest if you have interest in that please invest yourself give us feedback and we will like always, we pay a lot of attention to what is being said to us. Sure. Absolutely. So we'll get the email where you can submit feedback for that on the next development update um, tomorrow, I guess, is Thursday. Yep. Okay. Thank you, Jorg. And quick question from someone in chat from Carly. Hi, I love this sim. Have you talked about the issue of trees overgrowing secondary roads? I've tried fooling around with the files or using third-party acts. No luck. Like in my neighborhood, the house is are all overgrown. Thanks a lot. Can anybody answer to that? What is overgrown? Houses? Uh, no, I think no, it's the no, trees. The trees. It's too, many, trees. too many trees and slightly too, too many, long. Too, yeah. too many trees and, and trees a bit too high. Yes. So uh, we're also going to work on that because it's also something we've noticed. And, and mm -hmm. basically uh, in the town where I've grown, it looks like uh, the place is, is uh, in a forest, which is not. So we are going to to improve uh, and to work on that too. I, I would say it's um, I have I have looked into not, not, so trees. You know it's worldwide, right? I, but I have taken a specific example. I went take photos of trees in Courchevel, mm -hmm. and uh, and actually it's going to be related with the optimization. 
Feeding back to the optimization, so um, we have found an uh, improvement in the tree system, which is going to give us a 4x improvement here. What I found in Cochevel is that trees are about as high as they should be, but in real life in Cochevel, the trees are much, they're, they're, they're very thin, right? They're mm -hmm. high, but they're not very wide, and there's just a ton of them. There's like a tree every meter or so. It's very dense. And in the sim, we have trees which are much wider, and so they, they feel totally oversized. And, and basically, yeah, we can, if we change the shape of these trees, we have to have more of them, right? And otherwise, it doesn't give the same coverage. And having found this optimization, which gives us a 4x increase, it's going to allow to rework the whole tree uh, biomes and species and just make it one step more realistic, right? And uh, so I, I don't know if we're going to have a tree every meter, but currently, I think we have, um, we have a 10 by 10 meter boxes and there's two to three me trees per box. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so we will at least be able to to double this, or uh, I mean, whoever for x optimization. So that that's one step further, and it's all about how many millions of trees can we display, right? That's that's really the issue. And then of course you can go over height again, um, but the yeah the the issue is that the the art team tries to give an impression of a forest, and when you don't have the right number of trees, you tend to um, to have an issue with scale, right? So that that was really the blocker right now. And this improvement came from the from the, all the optimizations we're doing right now, and and I, I think this is going to really help. Awesome, that's good to know. Um, what, there are a bunch of questions here. We're about to hop into our Q and A section of this, but quickly, I'd like to toss it over to you, Yor, to talk a little bit about the marketplace. Ah, yeah, the marketplace. Uh, so I think we probably underexplained a little bit uh, what the marketplace is and isn't. So our marketplace. First off, when we first started, we were one of the very first things we actually did was talk to the third parties. And uh, one of the greatest requests from the third parties was, can we please, please, please get an in-sim marketplace for the first time? Because there had never been anything like this before. So we went to work. Uh, we have an in-sim marketplace. And the, 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 the whole goal of this is that people can share their things. Instead of steering people to websites that might be a little bit hard to find, it's very accessible. Um, but what we don't want to do is we, we are not curating the marketplace the, the way you might think we are because uh, we want to enable people to, 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 bring, to bring their creations to you. And um, we obviously have a rating system, so people, please go rate however you feel about the content that people make. Um, and in some ways, like I buy a lot of stuff still to this day on Sim Market. It's kind of similar in many, many ways. Uh, so the, the one thing that we, uh, when people want to give some feedback, Right now, we don't have the, the the contacts for every single creator, but you should talk to them. They need to hear from you. Just like we always say, please tell us, you know, what you like and what you don't like. I think they need that as well. So we're gonna we're gonna that's the plan to enable that. But just to explain the process, so we have established, I think it's now over a hundred direct relationships with developers. They send us their um, their content or the, their creations. We have a team that ingests that creation and that puts it in the marketplace. The price is decided by the creator and we just make it available. And beyond that, we are not really, like some people, I've, I've seen some stuff where people say, oh, let blah, blah, not, let them, you know, give them the ability to, 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 to release their stuff. Oh yeah, <laughs> but that's what the thing is for. So we are not in a decide what comes out in the marketplace thing. People people can bring to the marketplace what they, what they want. We try to, you know, help them showcase their work, and y'all can decide what you like, and, and that's that's as simple as that. I actually, what I what, and I like it because I don't want to be the guy who says this is good enough and this is not good enough. You know, that's sometimes in the eye of the beholder. Please decide. You know, and and, and I think it's I think that's a, that's a very healthy system. Mm -hmm. So in the future, we'll see possibly a new section in the marketplace for support where they can they know which third party to talk to. Yeah, yeah. Because mm -hmm. for, for example, in Sim Market, you have that. You see, there's a creator field. We don't. We typically people put it in their uh, in their text when they describe the item. Some don't. So it, it should be there. I agree. So we should go do that. Cool. Thank you. You're, um, I think that will clear up some of the questions with that. But now I think it's time to get into some of the top questions that we have from the forums as well as answer some questions in chat. And by far the top question has everything to do with AI traffic. Um, so we'll delve into this for a little bit, guys. Uh, feel free to ask questions about AI traffic as we talk about it. 
Um, but this comes from Abriel. He said, I'd love to see an update on the work being done on live AI traffic. And I'm going to start listing some points, so we'll go through them one by one. The first is representing all traffic in FlightAware in the simulator. I'll pass that on to you, Marcial. Yeah. So uh, we are currently updating the system and how the planes are getting ingested into the sim. So uh, this should be brought uh, in the next sim update. So it means that, um, so by the past, uh, you know, sometimes the, the planes information are not complete or we can detect some, 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 some issues. And the, the first version of the filtering was to remove everything that was not correct. And, and now we are including some, some system that can guess uh, the, the missing part of the information. So it means that most of the planes will not be into the sim. So that, that will be a new system that will be introduced soon. Person. Awesome. Thank you, Marcial. And next point is implementing real aircraft models and liveries visually and in ATC um, as promised instead of the generics. Passing that to you, York. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, so uh, it's actually exactly what our, what our creative director sort said to me like last year. He basically said, "York, the airports. We need to get the right planes and the right liveries and the other." Like, okay. So we went to work. Um, it's interesting. Like, uh, so on planes, that's we have, as you know, we're licensing everything, and we have tons of stuff licensed. So we're actually working on that, and I don't know if I want to give it away today what we're doing, but like with the French update comes comes some of that uh, as it pertains to France. Well, it's like it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure that out, but you know, let's just keep that a little bit in our back pocket. Mm. So the models, the goal is that the models are the right models, at least close to the pin to the right models as we can make them. We call that passive planes. Like they are not flyable, but they look exactly like exactly the right model. Mm -hmm. uh, what's much tougher for us is the liveries. And I can tell you like just like Last night, in the middle of the night, I got another airline saying, ah, you know, we're busy or we're like, we don't have enough bandwidth. And uh, let's talk about next year. And it's, it's a it's a livery. I really want it. Like, I really wanted to have it in part, as part of uh, one of the future world updates. And it's tough, right? The airlines, I think they are all a little preoccupied with other matters these days. And, um, you know, I can say all I want, like, hey, we're this flight simulator and the people really care and it needs to be authentic. And they're sort of looking at me like, okay, you know, we don't really fundamentally care about this. So we we are a little bit bound by our rules as 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 first party. Like we cannot, we will not uh, put liveries on things that we don't have the okay for from the people that own the livery. That doesn't mean you can't go to, you know, MS add-on or something and download that awesome 600 livery pack, which I did. Uh, but we can't put it on our servers until we have the agreements. Now, there are some people just focusing on that. I'm actually one of them now. Like I'm, I'm, I'm so, I'm so determined to go make that happen that I would go spend a bunch of time trying to convince airlines to give us the okay. But that is the goal. I mean, if I think ahead, what I would like, you know, a year two, it, it takes time, right, to make all the models and make all the livery paintings. Ideally, we have every plane that flies around. And yes, helicopters at some point, right? Mm -hmm. uh, exactly the right model with the exact right paint job. I mean, that's what we want. And and, and it's just going to take some time. But well, with the French update, we'll make a, at least a baby step forward. Right. That's exciting to hear. Yeah, thank honesty. you for the honesty on that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, next, we have, let's see, handing off lights from live control to the AI when something unexpected happens. This is for you, Marcial. Yes, uh, um, it feels like I'm going to tell the same sentence uh, all over again tonight. It's also in the pipe, so it's something we are working on, and it should be brought soon. Right. I'm sorry to say, every, <laughs> but, but you know, you know, uh, depending on the of the the updates and and the need of the team, we've got to to do the balance on the features. So depending on the, of the next balance, it would be on one of the next update or the other. Right. And but I, we're working on that. I think you did go into this pretty in depth in the last Q&A mm. to, to know like which improvements you're bringing um, first. So you can watch that last one if you want a little bit more insight into that. But thank you, Marcel. And uh, perhaps this might be the same answer, but the approach behavior, there are many airports in the AI where approaches are too high. 
Yes, so it will come with the with the same updates. Okay. It's a it's a global refactoring we, we that will happen on the on, on the the i mm -hmm. next to Apple's. Yeah. Awesome. And let's see, I have two more here. Behavior on the ground. Um, the AI will break too hard on landing and slow down too quick quickly. I think we maybe have talked about this already, Seb. Um, is there improvements mm -hmm. for for the behavior on the ground there? Mm, no, I haven't looked into it yet. What we did is since launch is we we tweaked the braking distances of, of all planes. Mm -hmm. So at least that should uh, fix that a little bit. But definitely they may still brake too hard. Um, yeah, that's something we haven't looked at, but it's it's linked to the AI behavior. Okay. So mm. um, it will it will be part of the subject I was talking about. Yeah, I gotcha. And then mm. the last point was working with modders that are already working on it and and uh, providing the SDK tools to help. This one's for yeah, we'll have, we'll have. I think we'll have more to say about that next stream. Like so, like we are. There's some great stuff that Working Title is doing um, on that, and uh, mm -hmm. yep, see how, how how exactly this moves forward. But uh, we love their work; it's awesome. So, mm -hmm. how we can get how can we get this integrated? It's it's definitely a topic, and but let's talk about it next time for sure. Okay, a couple of things to go through. So, okay, so we have information and plans, but we'll talk about that next stream in at the end of February. And let's see, I'm going to take a question here from chat. Now, actually, it's funny evidence. This is exactly a question we have <laughs> to talk about. But um, this one comes from the forums from evidence and also from SimTom. Um, after shutting down your aircraft, the Sim pauses the flight and shows the logbook. If you click continue, you can go back to the flight, but it won't be logged anymore. Is there any possibility to disable the end of flight screen? So to disable the end of flight screen, uh, I don't know if it's, a, if it's a good solution. The fact is the the flight should not end. The the rest of the flight should be still recorded in the logbook. Mm -hmm. So I've seen also a lot of complaints about the, the behavior of this. It's definitely a bug, mm -hmm. and it's definitely something we will have to fix. Okay, so marked as a bug. Okay. Yes. Perfect. And here's a question from chat from ESPM. ESPN, will Sim Update 3 be pushed out due to the delay of World Update 3, or is it on schedule? It's. It, it looks like it might slip a week. We don't know, like, we, we, let, one step at a time, right? So we have this branching system that we have to, you know, that's limiting us a little bit, but it's just the system in which we work. So there is a, we had just a discussion, depending on how it really, how long it really takes to finish England, make it great, England and Ireland, sorry, uh, you know, United Kingdom. Um, it might it might affect it. We think it might, but it's it's something like a week. Like we yeah. we, we think we're going to have caught up by the next world update. So you you, you may see the updates like trains, and but we are we're using one rail. So uh, at, the, at the at the big, at the beginning we've got different rails, and then the trains get get uh, assembled with with different parts, and then it's pushed to the. Uh, to the QA and the, the publication process, and once it's in this pipe, it's it's hard to uh, you know when the when the room is taken, it's hard to to make the other stuff happen. So that's why we need this delay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, thank you. And let's see, we already answered. I believe we already answered update. Yeah, we answered update on replay mode. We're good there. We talked mm -hmm. about icing. Did anyone want to expand on icing at all? Um, or can spend more time, but yeah, well. Yeah, I think we already talked about that. We're good mm. there. Okay. Okay. How? Okay, here's one. Um, so this is also from the forums. We mentioned this earlier, but um, are we aware that there is some kind of bug with live weather where it shows clear skies first, and then if you try to load in your second flight, the live weather does not work anymore? Seb? Yeah, I, I mean, it, it's it's. <laughs> I just spent five hours trying to do this, <laughs> and and True. I have I had it flying next to me. That's why sometimes. True story. I'm, yeah. Uh, so um, there was an issue with live weather on the second flight at launch, which we also, which I mean, even I had it sometimes, and we fixed that in September, and we thought it was gone, and then people said, no, no, we still have it. 
And so since then we've tried to reproduce it. I just, yeah, I just tried 10 flights, changed plane, longer flight, shorter flight. I had a TBM flying on autopilot for three hours, went back to the menu, went back in the sim, and I still haven't had it. Um, the only time I've seen it since then was on a YouTube video of someone um, who was uh, switched to clear skies and then he clicked on the live button and he said, well, I don't get live weather. And the issue is that the live button doesn't do live weather, it does live time. I think it's a bit clunky UX here. Yeah. Um, and so that we need to change. But I think there's probably another issue with sometimes the live weather connection with, which breaks or something. Um, the issues we don't have, so I think you, Microsoft's QA has tried to reproduce it. Our QA has tried to reproduce it. I've tried, I, it came back again today, so I spent five hours on it. The problem is we don't see it um, that much and we need to see it at least once to, and then turn on debug and see, okay, what is going on? Is the connection broken? Well, is the data broken? So you said, should we send a video? Yes. Like, oh yeah. Yeah, everything you can send us. We had that a few, few months ago with the thunderstorms. We were like, what are they seeing? And we didn't really see what you saw. But I mean, we're, we're assuming plenty, but we can't go everywhere all the time. So please give us more information. So it's it's clearly happening. So it's not like anybody's doubting that it's happening, but we don't. We have a tough time reproducing it. So please, right. as much information as you can give. Why does that happen? How? Why? Because sometimes we can't reproduce certain bugs um, that others are seeing. So the the the. Um... The first time we fixed one of the issues causing this, it was uninitialized memory. Mm -hmm. This is a, a typical programming bug. Um, and and uh, there's probably, I mean, we're fixing these all the time. And most of the time, they do nothing. It is just basically there's some variable somewhere, and it doesn't have an initialization. And so it really depends on what was in the memory before, right? I mean, mm -hmm. if you do some what, some outlook, some depends on what is there. And depending on what is there, it can have a different effect. And that was one of the issues we fixed in December, September. It was causing a breakdown of the just live weather connection. And there's maybe something else somewhere. And these are super hard to track because most of the time they just work because the memory is clean and it doesn't cause an issue. It can be something else, right? It can be a connection issue. It can be some, some I don't know, some, some mm -hmm. out of memory. I don't know. It can be anything. Okay. Um, and yeah, they're, they're, it's just hard to track. And uh, also, I, I would like to say we we uh, York said this earlier, right? We we always go to the bottom of of an issue, right? I've I've even taken my car and driven to some some simmers and and looked at the machine on what was going on, right? If you can't reproduce it, we I mean, there is no issue, right? If someone is is not too far from here and has it regularly, right, and knows how to reproduce it, then we could even go look check it out. It's it's. But the easiest is, is some steps, right? Something, if someone, that was the happening with the thunder, right? Someone had it all the time somewhere and we had a precise location. We went there and boom, we had it all the time too. And then then it's easy, right? Once you once you know what's going on, it's easy to reproduce. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Thank you, Seb. Um, yeah. About, about yeah. a bot that is not reproduced, I've, I've seen some uh, some messages about the uh, some RAM memory XMP settings. Mm -hmm. uh, it's also something that hasn't been reproduced. So if the the one that's got the uh, this issue can send us the spec of his machine exactly, and so we can like reproduce the machine, see what's going on. Because also like you can only fix bugs when they occur, and it looks like we need some specification here, some mm -hmm. more info. Gotcha. Okay, thank you. And question from chat from Impulse. Um, he says, they say, I'm sure many businesses, simulation centers, pilot schools, gaming arcades, etc., are interested in using Microsoft Flight Simulator for commercial purposes. Is there any news about a commercial use license? And if so, when would it become available and how would it work? Yeah, yeah. So the answer is exactly right. Um, I, I maintain a spreadsheet. It's now, I, I always joking, it's true. It's 1,200 rows long. Each row is a company that wants something. <laughs> you know, they want to do something. And um, I write all this stuff down. And take, I'm, we're trying to figure out what are the commonalities because some people are, it's like some funky stuff that people want to do because they see the digital twin and like, ooh, we could do all this stuff. Some of it is totally doable. Some of it a little bit further <laughs> out, I would say. Um, we're, we're talking about it, honestly. Like, so... My my boss's boss, his name is Matt Booty, he said something really smart for a long time. He said, Jorg, do this, focus, don't don't get distracted. And he said that to me for a long time. He said, like, 
that you will have a cacophony of noise of all the stuff that people want. And what you really need to do is make sure that your basic stuff works. And so we did that. For launch, we we honestly put our blinders on, did not really talk to anybody. Uh, I took the brunt of all that stuff coming our way, put it on a spreadsheet, you know. Uh, now we're in market and we said, okay, now we can maybe do some of these things. But uh, honestly, we're going to thr- we're going to throttle that uh, until you guys tell us that the sim is in great shape. There's, it would be foolish and a little bit um, irresponsible to start getting into a whole bunch of other stuff. You know, it's just other stuff, and they want other things. So right now, we always said fundamentally, we're making a sim for simars. We're still making a sim for simars. We're not going to deviate making a sim for simars until everything is hunky dory. And 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 so don't expect that to come too quickly because we're not we're not done you give us plenty of feedback <laughs> you know some will be plenty critical and i think that's fine but we just need to go through that before we do anything else mm-hmm. thank you Jorg. and andy's wondering if we can have an update on the terrain spikes issue yep it's found <laughs> it's found <laughs> and fixed and you should this is the uk update yeah it was a, um okay so same for the uh, water mask, right? Uh, the the water mask, the one we are using for for video, is going to be pushed for UK update. Right. Yeah, there's been uh, mm-hmm. there's been one water mask on release. There's been an update in October with some, mm-hmm. but not all. Uh, in December, we added all the remaining water masks we had, and someone actually double checked all the locations. Uh, and uh, we someone even went through all the videos we published and made sure they we didn't forget one. Because it's 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 a big list, right? And uh, so this UK update should have all of them. And then of course, then there's going to be there's always new stuff coming in, right? So it's yes, sure. It's right. never finished, but uh, but uh, there's a big update on what I'm asking UK. Yeah. Okay. And, and the... <laughs> I mean, I'm some sorry. people say like, oh, they have when they make these videos, that's not really true. Well, of course it's true. How else could we make the video? But it's sometimes in a branch that's not public yet. So it's just there's just a delay, you know, because yeah. we have. When we have a sim update in the pipe, we're not going to add that stuff. It's just going to create chaos, right? So we yes. finish one stream, and then we're going to put it in the next one. So sometimes it can be as long as, I don't know, six to eight weeks even, that you might see something so, in the video that might not be quite available yet. And sometimes specifically, more. Specifically, there are the world videos had that, because we're like, ah, oh, the world, let's do the world. Well, you know, some of those world updates are, had not been done. So it's, but but just know it's coming. Like, this is all real and it's all the, the artists obviously want that to be out there because they made it mm-hmm. yeah. So, yeah i think the uh, big question was around the oceania world trailer but seb you mentioned that most of those water masks will be in the uk update mm-hmm. okay in uk i think i think everything so someone double checked that everything that has ever been shown in yeah. any trailer is in the uk update okay and it's it's a long process because you unfortunately this is one of the pipelines which is manual by hand so you have to go on the island say, and yeah. paint the water mask and copy it into yeah. the right branch. Mm-hmm. And there's thousands. So it's yeah, it was a bit long. Okay. Yeah, for the moment we don't have any automated system to find the the correct location for water masks. Mm-hmm. And we briefly mentioned last time that we were thinking of some kind of visualization to show the community um, which water masks are available. Um, is that something we're working on? Oh. Oh, I think that the the list of the watermass has been communicated. So I've got it. Uh, I've got the I've got the list. So we yeah. can put dots on the uh, one map if you want. Yeah. yeah, we wanted to make an image. So it's a good mm-hmm. takeaway. We need to we need to do that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Thank you, guys. Um, next question we have here from the forums is: What progress have you made on a working flight director? Uh, the lateral flight director bar isn't working with autopilot off. Um, it keeps commanding wing level wing levels no matter how active the lateral mode. It's for you, Marcial. Uh, yes. Um, <laughs> I'm feeling a bit uncomfortable to uh, to give a, a proper answer on this. Um, I know that the, um, the, the huh, because I'm going also to uh, to to say the. Um, the, the same thing. Some of these bugs have been fixed and will be there for for sim up to three, mm-hmm. uh, but we'll continue to uh, to do the hard work and and it's in the pipe. But so, some of the some of these bugs are already fixed, but it's a it's a long road. Thank you, Marcial. Actually, I'm there's... sorry. So no, I can give. <laughs> no, you're fine. Um, yeah. Honesty. 
it's much appreciated. Um, there is a bug right now impacting um, this, the game where it's the 10 degrees versus one. Uh, I think you might know about this. And do you want to talk about when that's coming up? Yes, Fix. because this time I can say that <laughs> this is fixed yes. <laughs> for good and it's going to be brought in under three. So yes, it's not in the pipe, it's done. Ah, I feel relieved a bit. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, you're getting lots of yeses. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. And um, there was a comment um, from the forums that said, you know, the voting system is great. It allows us to show what we want most, but has the f side effect that it will mostly cater to big, massive requests like helicopters, VR, DX12, senior gateway, etc. These requests are great, but they ta take a long time to implement. Um, so I think basically the question here is, um, what about the smaller bugs that probably won't ever make it to the top of the feedback snapshot? What happens to them? Are you looking at them, etc.? Well, well, Jane, you could explain that. Because, <laughs> yeah. we, because we just put a system in place. Do you want to explain? We did, how yeah. yeah. So I, obviously, I'm glad that the voting system is implemented, but we acknowledge, you know, it isn't a perfect system. Obviously, the most popular bugs will live in the feedback snapshot. So what about all those other bugs, the smaller ones? Um, we did just put a system into place recently where um, they all these bugs, no matter how big or small they are, they're they're logged by me and the other community managers to the developers. So I don't just look at the most highest voted ones. I see which ones are active, even if there's one or two votes, and I make sure the devs see those. Of course, after that, based on the severity of the bug, it'll still be prioritized and scheduled for a future update. But they are all seen, no matter if they're in the feedback snapshot or not. The feedback snapshot really serves to show you what the most important ones are to you at, in the moment. So, yeah. I mean, I would just say we, we strengthened that pipeline. It was mm -hmm. definitely overwhelmed at launch, you know. Right. There, were, there was just so much feedback. Uh, but now we have a direct pipeline into our ADO, which is our bug database. So Jane and I think Jane and Alex were both on the last, uh, you know, the communities, uh, community posts, so you know them. There are people at the Sobo that do that. Mm -hmm. um, so it goes straight into our triage, we triage daily. Um, so if you find something that's urgent, we'll hear about it right away, don't worry. And that's not like we're waiting somehow magically and we're just working on the feedback snapshot stuff. That's not what's happening. Mm -hmm. There are hundreds of bugs that are being fixed all the time or little additions that we're making. So um, just keep, honestly, just keep the feedback going. Um, we just hired more people to actually be have enough manpower or people power to get this into the bug database, but then it goes immediately to the dev team and appropriately prioritized every day. Right. Um, Coveen says, Jane, please ask for force feedback coming for joysticks. Does anyone <laughs> know about that? <laughs> yeah, I saw like 40 different comments. Monsieur, <laughs> monsieur. <gasps> what, what, what can I say? Uh, um, so the force feedback code base is there. Uh, we are missing some some inputs, right? So um, so we have Microsoft Force Feedback to support. I don't know if you, well we should have a look on that. But basically, new new peripherals doesn't have force feedback. So uh, we've been focused on the, the 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 bright new peripherals that uh, that our partners have, have put to market. Mm. And on, on those on those peripherals, there no one has uh, some force feedback right now. So it was not the high priority. So we can we could spend some time on on, on very super good hardware at Microsoft did by the past. Mm -hmm. And the force feedback was one of them. Um, but for the moment, as York said, it, it's just a matter of priority and, and our focus was on, on new peripherals. For sure. Okay. Thanks, Marcial. And I think we might have answered this, but is uh, node based particle system, it was in dev updates, but then it got dropped and I think people wanted to make sure that was still in the works. So for the moment, the uh, the FX or plan in Synopdate three, we still have to do some hot QA tests to see if is this has no uh, hard impact on, on on performances and that the quality is sufficient for for the app direction. And if this passes the test, then it will be in the update three. If not. I can guarantee you that we will focus it so we can bring that in a bit more. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, this might have been also about the SDK because we had it in the SDK mm. for a while. Mm. So it's it, just know that the team is, it's kind of, Marcel said it earlier, the team is excited. Like I, I can't wait for Contrails, for example. It would be great. Um, but they, they want to make sure that it works right. So it's, it's going to come out in the SDK for those of you who use the SDK. And then Marcel just said, it's, it's incoming. We're not exactly sure which update it's going to be in, but in the next two, I would say, roughly, right? I think that's Oh, right. yeah, next two for sure. Yeah. Cool. Evidence. Any info you can share? Yes, yeah, in update. Any, uh, any info you can share on A2A and Aerosoft aircraft? Can we expect them to buy them on the uh, buy them for Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020? <laughs> uh, so uh, <laughs> it's funny. I so with the, the 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 our integration with Aerosoft asks up sometime. Uh, you know, it's it's very deep. Like there's it's daily, and Seb has been working. He's working hard on the CLJ. But Seb, do you want to talk about the CLJ a little bit before I ramble on? Um, yeah, so it's in the final bits um, of, uh, of tuning. Uh, more specifically, just the engine. Um, and more specifically, fuel consumption. And, uh, and so um, the, the team at Aerosoft is, I mean, they want everything to like, to like 0.1%. So it's extremely accurate. There's all the data from the... Um, from the physical real world plane. And so, um, yeah, when the fine tuning process of the engine mostly, and um, I think maybe maybe a few small bugs, but yeah, it's it's uh, it's daily. We have an open channel and uh, it's 10 pages a day, right? Of discussions to get, uh, to get the last things re resolved. Um, it's very interesting. And yeah, you can easily get into the rabbit hole with a, <laughs> with a complex plane like that. But I think we're very close, yeah. Very close, and and uh, this is this is part of the update. Um, even the um, UK update has things uh, which improved on the SDK. So, for example, the flap system has been improved um, on the end on the turbines. There's been improvements. Um, these have been made basically uh, as requests from third parties. So, Aerosoft wasn't the only third party to request these. Um, but they help make the flight model more accurate, and uh, and that's actually I, I mean we don't even mention these uh, all all a lot, but there's all the SDK updates which happen with every update, right? And there's there's a ton of stuff in there. Um, yeah, so it's it's great, really great, great working relationship. Very, I really love the discussions we have because it's mm. I mean it's a it's a world of passionate people, and uh, and uh, the technical aspects are so interesting on on especially on the engine, yeah. Yeah, I would just say we have a like our relationship with third party is really great. Um, like we are, we're talking to so many companies. We're, we're talking about the Airsoft relationship a lot. I mean, obviously they they published the retail edition of the sim, so we we talk to them all the time. But just know that there are literally hundreds of planes. Like I, I sometimes write it's a hundred. It's actually more that are in development right now, and we talk to those programmers all the time. And they tell us what they need, and we're giving them. We're, we're trying to give them what they need when they need it. So it's uh, it's super harmonious, and I think it's it's going to be great to see. Like I wonder how many planes they're going to be in the sim from third parties by the end of the year, but I think it's going to be quite a few. And I think they're getting better and better. And the 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 CRJ is exciting because we think this is this is really a standout plane. It's going to be really cool, and there's there's plenty of other ones that are coming that are going to be similarly cool. So yeah, I think the, the interaction has been fantastic. Yeah. Thank you, Jorg. And we only have about two minutes left. So Jorg, I know you wanted to talk a little bit in closing um, about some of the other people we're actively engaging with uh, moving forward this year and beyond. Oh, uh, it's a ton. It's a ton of things. Like I, it's, mm -hmm. I, I can't do it in two minutes. So maybe you'll spend more time next next time. I want I want you to know that, that there's a lot of things we didn't get to with weather. I think we talked to, to uh, Media Blue yesterday, or maybe two days ago. And we're going to talk to them tomorrow. And there are some things on the horizon that I think are going to be very appreciated by everybody who has, uh, you know, observations about how the real world weather works. Mm -hmm. uh, there are, we are, there's increasing increasing um, tendrils into the real world aviation that we'll talk about more. There are uh, organizations that are. Um, you know, celebrating the history of aviation that we're working with. So I, there's going to be there's so much stuff. 
honestly, maybe we need a two-hour meeting or something. But it's, uh, <laughs> but but it's 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 just awesome. Like I would say it this way: the what I see is that the the world of aviation has really embraced us as a platform that goes for manufacturers, certainly for peripheral makers, but also real pilots, uh, people that really care about you know, where planes were and where planes are going. So you, you'll just see lots of things going on with Microsoft Flight Simulator. It's, it's really great. Uh, that all being said, we are focused on you um, because that, you is why we exist. All this other stuff's cool and it's exciting for us. But the first, first order of business is let's make the sim really great. This feedback, we always capture this. We'll look at everything that you wrote. So don't worry that this some are getting lost or not answered or something. We're going to look at it. And um, yeah, I mean, that's all. And thank you. Like uh, that, we, I say that all the time in random interviews or something. It is, it is the most fun I've ever had because you exist and because we get all this feedback and because you care and because you know and all those things. It's just great. You know, typically you make a game and you know, you hope people like it and stuff, but the interaction here is just great. And I hope you feel that we really appreciate it and that um, we, are, we are paying attention and that it's a two, two way street. And let's that's, that's, that's keep this going and make it, make it great over time. Yeah. Thank you, Jorg. And of course, guys, um, after this is over, in the forums, I'll be um, writing out all the answers for all the questions you had on the forums. So you can look out for that coming in the next couple of days. So if you don't want to watch the VOD, if you want to read it, the answers will be there too. And thank you again for watching. Um, we'll be back next month to answer more of your questions. Jorg, Marcial, and Seb, thank you so much again for taking the time out of your day to hang out with thank us you, in the community. Jenna. Thank you very much. Very thank much you. appreciated. Chat, we'll see you soon. Join us uh, Friday for our next community fly-in. We're going to hop around in the uh, Greek islands. So I'll see mm -hmm. you guys then. Until then, I'll see you guys later. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Au revoir tout le monde. Tschüss. <laughs>